Welcome to Talking Giants presented by DraftKings. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. Last mailbag of the offseason. This is the last time we're going to do a mailbag until I think even week two because we have a Thursday night football game for week two. So, um, so you got your last questions in. Justin, how are you? Bobby Skinner, getting excited for camp. Getting excited for camp. Uh, you know, we started to make some travel plans for you which is really, really cool. We're going to get you up here for Fan Fest. Really excited for that. Um, mailbag questions have been coming through. I know sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm sitting here, you know, mailbag questions, they aren't the best, but our, our last two have been really, really good, especially for their, for it being absolutely very, very slow and it being some downtime because they're, they're Have we getting... talked about the decision to get rid of voicemail? Um, yes, we have talked about it. I don't know if we've publicly talked about it, Um but maybe we should maybe we should put it to a vote. I feel like give it, allowing the people to decide what they want. Um, but the show does flow a lot better, even though I love like I grew up at sports radio, and especially the second I got my license. If we had three live hours a day, we could do it. But it's with one mailbag episode yeah. a week, it's too much. Yeah, but you know, I, I grew up at sports radio, so I love that element of kind of recreating sports radio. You know, I feel like uh, feel like I'm you know I'm, I'm Michael K and Frances or whatnot. But it the show flows a lot better when it's just we're asking the mailbag questions and we're not taking like a minute and a half break of somebody else talking. So um, Bobby Skinner doing good. I went to Pennsylvania. I went to Philadelphia and my main computer broke. So that's bad on me. It was my bad decision that I did that and I get what I deserve. Well, I'm also down in the dumps. I hurt my hand. Damn. This is the first time I've ever taken notes on the computer before. Like I went to go write and I just couldn't do it. Like, Here's me writing, if you could see on there. Here's me writing Patreon. Nice. I just, I can't write, which reminds me, I hurt my hand at the racetrack. We have two new Patreons. We have Vincent Moyo, who I'll be honest, he's not new. He'd signed up on July 1st. And we just, it was while we were on vacation and we forgot and forgot. And so Vincent, thank you. Thank you. And then Danny Bostock, who um, he's paying in euros, so I don't know exactly where he's from, but Danny Bostock, he's from the UK, so I'm waiting on his address to send him some magnets. Justin, who are these people? Well, it's been a while since I said this, Bobby Skinner. Those wonderful people went to patreon.com slash talking giants, and for $2 a month, uh, two times a month, you get access to possibly winning some shirts. Bobby Skinner, did we formally announce that we have a new shirt on the store? I'm going to tweet it out on Thursday because – our sales team told us that people spend the most money on Thursday. Cool. Um, but if you want now, there's the picture of number 21 and number 23 high-fiving, and it's called Jersey Boys because they're both from New Jersey. Uh, Logan Ryan, Jabril Peppers. Um, that's technically that, – that may or may not be them. If any lawyers ask us any questions of, oh, we don't know who those guys are, just random 21 and 23 guys. But if you like uh, – if you take – if you live in New Jersey, take pride of some Jersey boys being on the Giants, uh, there you go. So be have access if you sign up, patreon.com slash Talking Giants. Two times a month, uh, some uh, a free Talking Giants shirt, a raffle. Bobby Skinner does them. It's a lot of fun. Also, we record the shows, uh, live shows, every uh, Monday and Thursday night. And then for the regular season – Game days, you want to be hanging out with us in that YouTube stream, uh, Tuesday nights, and then also Thursday nights as well. So patreon.com slash talking giants have an awesome community there. Thank you to all of our patrons. Thank you to all of our future patrons. Bobby Skinner, were you changing tires at the racetrack? Like were, were you, you were changing four? Were you putting fuel in the fuel can? What were you doing that you hurt your hand? Well, my brother took second. Congrats to him. He hadn't yes. raced in a long time, took second place. Good. Um when I went to go, because, you know, they do, you know, you take a picture after the top three finishers. And then when I went to go jump over the pit wall, I just jam my thumb into into it. So it's not like a serious injury. It's just a jam, it's a sprain, a sprain jam thumb. It just takes like a week to heal, but it sucks. I can't play basketball and I can't write this week. So I'm, I'm pretty much everything that I do within a week uh, has been ruined. You could have lied to me and you could have said, yeah, you know, I was changing some pistons. Well, I changed. And, I I got four brand new tires on my truck today. How about that? Ooh, well, I know you broke down again. I, I, well, I, saw, I, I, <laughs> I the the truck I bought the tires were so bad on it that they were slowly just going like, and it was like, and it wasn't like you're just driving and it pops. Like I was coming over the bridge, and you just hear like the belt start slipping and the trucks just start shaking. I'm like, come on, please make it home, please make it home, and it and it popped again. If I had a dime for every time you've broken down, like in the time span that I've known you, I probably would have a dollar. So three, three times. I mean, I've popped three of the four tires. The fourth one was going to pop. And that's when I just went and got new tires. There you go. Is that a thing in Florida? Tires just pop. No, that's just my tires. That's just your tires. Okay. 
Um, I was gonna say one more thing, and I forgot. All right, let's. Uh, I I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, "Take it away, Steve." Oh yes, absolutely. Mail time. Mail time. The mail's here. Come on, bye guys. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me wanna wag my tail. When it comes, I wanna wail. All right, thanks, Steve from Blues Clues. Justin, let's get into the mail. First question is coming from at Zach Jacobs. Would you rather have kept Dalvin and not signed a Dory Jackson, now knowing that we got Aaron Robinson in the third round of the draft and have a good slash depth pieces to use in the secondary? I believe Dalvin was so crucial for us and what we were able to do last season. Justin, this answer for me is an absolutely not. The only way I would regret that is if Adore Jackson is just injured. That's the only possible way I, yeah. I would do that. Because Adore Jackson over Isaac, uh, Isaac Yadam is such a bigger upgrade, or even like a rookie Aaron Robinson is such a bigger upgrade than Dalvin Tomlinson to Danny Shelton was a downgrade. Just simple as that. And like even if even if we didn't like get Danny Shelton, we already have Dexter Lawrence and, and Leonard Williams playing those positions. I don't play, I know they don't play nose, but like you can put Austin Johnson at the nose or, or, you know, whatever, and, and have Dex and Leo and still just have that be a really strength of position without a Dora Jackson. I don't think we look at cornerback as a strength of a position. We look at James Bradbury as a strength, but we look at the other side and like that, that's not a huge strength. Now with a Dory, we might have one of the best, you know, a top five secondary in the league. So to me, this is like a absolutely not the only way I, I could get myself into that mindset was if a joy was just injured. Yeah. And we very much, you know, hindsight could say at the end of this year, if a Dory Jackson plays eight games, right. If a Dory Jackson plays eight games and Donald Thompson's over there in Minnesota playing another 16 and not missing uh not missing a game or, you know, not missing a, a snap when he's required to be out there. Right. So that we could be playing that hindsight when it comes time, but think of how the giants have moved on from defensive linemen in the past, you know, even thinking back to Linville Joseph, right. And we replaced Linville Joseph with, uh, or no, even think back to Barry Cofield. We replaced Barry Cofield and Fred Robbins with Linville Joseph. We replaced Linville Joseph with Jonathan Hankins and even snacks. Harrison comes around. We replaced snacks, Harrison and, and Linville Joseph, you know, eventually with Dalvin Tomlinson comes in here. And now we have the good crop of depth, that defensive tackle interior defensive line. Right. But also think back to how did we replace Janoris Jenkins, Dominic Rogers, Camardi, or especially Dominic Rogers, Camardi when he left, how do we replace him? Well, basically it took us years of bad slot corner play. Um, to get Darnay Holmes and even Darnay Holmes is pretty solid, but nothing absolutely just spectacular or groundbreaking. Um, so it's taken us many, many years to fix this secondary versus the giants have a very good track record at interior defensive line. And I also think it reflects the rest of the league. The rest of the league has you know, typically pretty good track records of even if you have a, a significant interior defensive lineman leave, you can get somebody who's a little bit cheaper or you can get somebody, you know, who you, know, you can get late in the later in the later in the draft, the middle of the draft, who can kind of fill that role. Maybe not as well as a Dalvin Thompson, but hopefully they can do a solid job. And secondary in today's game is just so much more important. Well, and we still have a really good D line. It's not like, you know, losing Dalvin like up oh, now our D line is not good. It's still really good. You have Leonard yeah. Williams, you have Dexter Lawrence, who. You know, if you remember Dalvin, it took year three for him to like make that that leap, you know, and, and Dexter Lawrence has already set a, a really good floor. Like Dexter Lawrence was already a really good player. So can he turn into a great player this year? Um, and Adore Jackson, when healthy, will play 100 percent of the snaps. Dalvin Thomas has never missed a game. He's never played more than 60 percent of the snaps in a season. Yeah. You know, 60 percent last year, 50, you know, four percent the year before. So it's just it's. We've already we still have a really good D line. I think Danny Shelton is like just a like a hugely underrated move. Like if Danny Shelton was the first free agent, if Danny Shelton was signed when we signed John Ross and you had those vice versa, I think we'd talk about Danny Shelton more. It's just that Danny Shelton was signed after we got Kenny Galladay and Adore Jackson. Yeah. And again, you know, value. You I you you said it, Bobby, but just by playing hundred percent of snaps versus sixty percent of snaps, but also in today's game, having a really good secondary. I'm sorry. It, it's just more important 
than having a really, really good defense line. Both of those things, they play off of each other. You know, if you have a good D line, then your linebackers can play back and you can focus more on secondary. Yes, that is true. Um, but for this Giants defense and Patrick Graham, you know, having that good back end, it's going to make everybody else around you better and it will make the D line better because they're going to have more time to get back to the quarterback. And, you know, they're going to be expected to do more in the run game because they're up front and they're going to be expected to clog the holes. So, um, Dory Jackson all the way. So, next question. Next question from at Glock Roach. Um, Glock I need to get Roach. like a sound effect for Glock Roach. Bang, bang. Bleh, bleh. Nice. If Peppers isn't re-signed, do you guys think Holmes or Robinson could play in his spot? It's an interesting idea from Glock Roach. Bleh, bleh. Um, I I think I think Robinson could do it. I just don't think they will, you know, like I really do think it's as, it's as simple as, you know, remember what was our conversations about uh, Xavier McKinney when we drafted him? It's like, he's a lot like Jabril Peppers. Yeah. In the box. You know, they both yeah. play the kind of the, the same position. So I think it'd be as simple as putting Xavier McKinney down as that box safety. You leave Logan Ryan in his role and you use Julian Love, you know, fill in the blank, whoever else to play that third safety role. Um, now, Aaron Robinson, maybe not like play that full Jabril Peppers, like money backer role, but you could also put him out there as like that, that fit, that, uh, that, that six DB and, and line him, you know, have him covering tight ends or lining up on the inside. Like he's shown a willingness to do that. Darnay, I would say absolutely not. You know, Darnay, Darnay just doesn't have the strength and I don't think he's physical. He doesn't have the physicality. I mean, that's why he had to move inside. And that's why last year, you know, you know, we're putting together some of our camp stuff. And I remember, the conversation with darn a a lot of people are saying like why can't he play outside like well watch what happens when he goes against bigger receivers he just yeah. gets body you know where in this like when he was facing you know hollywood brown it's like wow he played awesome this game he's playing you know but it was when he played those bigger bodied receivers on the outside he struggled yeah and with you know with darn a i was re-watching the the, the uh, washington game in washington where he was targeted like nine times and he allowed eight receptions and that's according to pro football reference it could be you know, could be a little sketch in terms of how they, how you record catches and non catches, blah, blah, blah. But even when corners were playing kind of closer in the line, closer to the line of scrimmage, maybe not necessarily impressed, but even when some boundary outside corners were playing closer to the line of scrimmage, Darnay Holmes was still playing back. And even when, you know, he was in the box and maybe a, a tight end was technically like a slot guy and, you know, he was in the box, Darnay was still, was still playing back. So I don't see him there. Uh, Peppers is just, he's an athletic freak. Um, he plays balls to the wall and this is another spot where, you know, Peppers does a very, very good job of what he does. But honestly, you know, Bobby, I'm thinking of a guy, there's some who comes to the top of my head, who the giants were looking at a couple of years ago, who was like a box safety. If, if a Jonathan Cyprian's of the world, a box, a middle, a mid tier box safety comes rolling around and we still have Xavier McKinney. We still have Logan Ryan. That's not like the worst thing in the world. And I know there's like a Peppers re-sign question. And I think that's actually our next question. So I won't get, I won't get too much into it, but this is another position where Peppers plays a spot where you can find hybrid guys to kind of fill that role. Will they fill it? Well, I don't know. Like Peppers. I don't know. Maybe not. But again, when we're talking about money and who's going to replace who it's, it's some tough questions. So are we ready for that next question? Cause I don't want to get too much into that answer. Yes, next question. Gazman, Gazman Superstar. Superstar. With both being in their last year, who are the Giants most likely, more likely to extend, Peppers or Engram? Most fans say Peppers, but with Engram getting voted to the Pro Bowl, do they gamble on his talent finally coming good? Thanks for the summer content, fellas. Hashtag talking Giants versus the world. Is everyone getting ready for Jabril Peppers not to be resigned? feel like these are some vibes and some energies that are being put out there and I'm starting to be I'm starting to get prepared for it every day closer to the season becomes less likely that Jabril Peppers will um, be re-signed for 2022 and then when well, you maybe talk the Giants about also you know we've we've talked about it in the past but I'm sorry I'm butting in but we've talked about in the past how the Giants way of doing things was getting the players that are most important to them re-signed before the season maybe that's not 
the precedent that they're going off of anymore. Now there's not a lot of people. I feel like there's not a lot of, there's not a ton of people that have changed. Like Dave Gettleman was in the building when they were doing that philosophy. You know, Dave Gettleman was a part of, and I'm sure there's still, you know, Chris Mayer, he was a part of that decision-making and uh, Kevin Ambrose, he was a part of that decision-making, you know, I, and I don't know if Joe Judge is going to be the one, you know, who's going to, oh, he's going to change the way that we negotiate players and contracts. No, I don't think that's the case. I don't know if Joe Judge is worried about Jabril Peppers' contract extension when he's in the middle of camp, um, but maybe they're just changing the way that they're doing things and I'm not going to, I'm not going to take it as, it as a sign that if Peppers or Engram aren't re-signed, that they're gone like before camp. Does that make sense? I'm not going to take that as like a sign. Well, Logan Ryan, he didn't get the free. I mean, they didn't even let the season end before they re-signed him. So, the, you know, Sterling Shepard or something like they haven't had a, a lot of guys to re-sign to go off of. I mean, even, but even look at Odell, who they ended up trading. They got it done before the season started. Um, You know, and that was that was kind of a, an off season with some, you know, some issues with Odell. Um, not Not to get, you know, too deep into it. But here's here's like the Ingram versus Peppers, where Ingram, I could start seeing it more likely, is that there's more reasons for Ingram to not be resigned before the season than Jabril Peppers. Jabril Peppers isn't gonna like he's not gonna change. He's not gonna go up a ton or down a ton of who uh, he has as a player. Yeah, and you know they've they've already paid Logan Ryan, Xavier McKinney's on his rookie deal, uh, rookie deal for you know including this year another three years. And he was a second round draft pick too. It's not like he was a fifth rounder, you know. Right. So there, there's like, there's a bunch of reasons for like Jabril Peppers to already be resigned if that's what it was going to be. Where Evan Ingram, there's not. Where Evan Ingram's coming off of his worst season. I know it's off the Pro Bowl, but coming off of his worst season, where Evan Ingram might not be in a rush to sign a contract after this past year. And where the Giants' view of it is like, hey, is Ingram going to have as bad as a season this year? No. But guess what? He also got Kyle Rudolph. So he's not going to have the volume. He, you know, we have, you know, Kenny Galdi, hopefully Saquon back fully healthy at, at some point in the season. So Evan Ingram won't, he won't get the volume. Even if he has a good season, he won't get the volume numbers on paper, which is what people look at. That's why when people like, we see Evan Ingram on these top tight end lists, it's like, they don't look at the, they don't watch him play. They just look at the stats. He had, you know, some good, you know, catches and, and yards versus the rest of the league. It's like, okay, but he's remember how good we much we loved him out of the draft. Boom. Put him on that list. Um, and I know front offices do more research than that, but still. Um, so there's just more reasons for Peppers or for Ingram to not be re-signed yet than there is for Peppers. And the one blanket, and I guess, so this kind of stems off of the last answer that I kind of gave to the last question, but it, there's a positional value argument too, where the, uh, having a tight end and having you know a tight end that's locked up is more important than the role yeah, that Evan Ingram is not that good. Correct. Now, but I'm saying just forget the player and just consider the position. If we're talking about from a front office philosophical point of view, and maybe the Giants do have, a, you know, like, I think every NFL team does have a philosophical point of view where it's like, we want to put money in these positions. We don't necessarily want to put money in these positions. And the role that Peppers plays, maybe they see McKinney going into it. Maybe they see forming Aaron Robinson to it. They still have Julian Love on the roster, who Julian Love was third on the team in tackles last year, by the way. Kind of a fun, crazy stat. And he looked gonna... good in the box, by the way, too. Now, yeah, Julian Love looked great. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when Peppers was hurt in 2019, we were most excited for Julian Love kind of playing that safety kind of role. But then he was kind of you know, the, the reps went down and, you know, playing that, you know, back free safety, it changes your role and you're not exactly uh, on the TV screen as much, unless your name is Antoine Bethea and you're allowing 50 yard touchdowns left and right. Um, but there's still Julian Love there too. So I can see the front office if, or even if it were me, and I, this really pains me to say, because I even think there's a, a, there's probably a clip of me out there saying that it's absurd that Jabril Peppers it's, it's, it's absurd that Evan Ingram is being considered over Jabril Peppers. That clip is definitely out there with both of us saying it. But now that you're thinking more and more of it, I'm putting on my positional value cap. It's like, yeah, you know, tight end position is more important than safety, well, but Jabril I, Peppers, but Jabril Peppers is like right now, four times the player that Evan Ingram is when, in terms of the value that he brings, because Evan Ingram just was so horrible last year. I don't think it's even positional value. I just think it's, <sighs> If B.J. Hill and Dalvin Thomason were up at the same time for free agency, who's more likely to come back? B.J. Hill. Because Dalvin Thomason is going to garner a lot more at a position where there's good players. Where B.J. Hill, you could bring him back for cheap. 
So I, I don't think they're going to be paying Evan Ingram eleven million a year. If they're paying, if they're paying Evan Miller, Evan Ingram like the same amount of money as Jabril Peppers or whatever, then yeah, that's stupid. But if they're getting him on a reasonable deal, then yeah, I'm okay. But the, you know, yeah, I don't think it's like up. I don't think it has for me. It has nothing to do with positional value. Yeah, there's arguments all all, all around for it. Um, but I, do I mean, think I the, would prioritize bringing Peppers back over Ingram. Yeah, but I but I but really Peppers, con- I, Peppers maybe his money may be much higher than what Evan Ingram's going to be. And Evan, Evan Ingram, what kind of season is he going to have? Because can he be the player he was at the beginning of 2019 and stay healthy? Because I mean, before he got injured in 2019, I mean, Evan Ingram was rocking. Like he was, you know, he was looking at his stats and his numbers. I mean, he was balling out. Yeah. He was, and then this year, it's like he has played healthy, and he had you know the most cost, costly drops. Maybe an NFL, has has any NFL player had drops that were more costly for one season than Evan Ingram last year? Well, I, mean, it was, I don't I don't know if it's NFL history, but you've heard me say the the the, the stat that um, there was no player in the NFL that costed his team more by being targeted in the 2020 season than Evan Ingram, and that's according to EPA. Like Evan Ingram, by result of his play in 2020, it cost the Giants the most points out of any single player that was targeted in the NFL last year. Right. So, you know, other you see that other teams are seeing that Ingram may not garner a lot of money on the open market. And he he may sign to a, you know, a team friendly deal to get an extra, you know, maybe some more security where, you know, like it's, it comes on, it's on his side too. So yeah. um, I think it's just, I'm getting, I'm getting ready for Peppers to be a free agent in 2022 with Evan Ingram. I have no clue what's going to happen with him. Yeah. Wait, you know, I, you know, with I, Pe- I, with I hate peppers. There's not a ton of reasons for him to not be resigned if they plan on doing it by week one. I hate the wait and see argument, but this is one of those where it's like, yeah, you kind of do have to wait and see, but you know, just to put a bow on it, I do think I even, Hey, wild take about Dave Gettleman analytics. I do think Dave Gettleman does consider positional value at least a little bit. And especially by how he's always, he's always invested a lot in the secondary and that, and that is very analytically thinking kind of thinking forward by him. So good for Dave Gettleman. I know a lot of Giants fans probably hate that, but guess what? Dave Gettleman maybe does look at them a little bit. All right, next question. Tim at the Giants good yet. I love that handle. DraftKings Sportsbook is not only my favorite sportsbook, but also America's top rated sportsbook. Speaking of America, our top athletes are over in Tokyo competing for the gold. I want the gold. And DraftKings has a medal worth uh, worthy offer just for my listeners listen to this great offer before you listen to it have you you seen heard about the leprechaun in the hood justin no have you seen the leprechaun say yeah place any pre-event wager of one dollar to be eligible to cash 100 dollars in free credits if america wins any medal this year i bet you they will that's 100 to 1 odds on an american athlete to stand on the podium and receive gold silver or bronze this week 100 to 1 odds on an offer like this doesn't come around often. So sign up at DraftKings Sportsbook now to get in on all of the action. I love using DraftKings Sportsbook. It's easy to navigate, has plenty of instructions for new betters, and nearly limitless ways to get in on all the action. My friends and family have been loving DraftKings and Sportsbook, and I know you will too. Download the top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code JOHNBOY when you sign up to turn $1 into $100 in free credits if America wins a medal. That's code JOHNBOY to turn $1 into $100 in free credits for a limited time. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. I have an Olympics take. I think it was a crackhead who got a hold of the wrong stuff. I have an Olympics take. Go for it. Think the basketball team has a good chance of winning gold. They they've been losing games. I I don't know. They but they've been losing games. They have. They lost to Australia and Nigeria. Tough. Greg Popovich has got to go. And then they lost. Then they lost Bradley Beal and added Jabal. McGee and Stanley Johnson, not Stanley Johnson, Cave. I don't even know who the player is. Ball Sheard, good friend. Um, Tim <clears throat> at the Giants, good yet. Love that handle. If you could bring back one retired Giant to play on this team for only this season outside of LT, who would you choose? I think this is easy. Michael Strahan. No. 
I mean, Please. yes, that may, I mean, that's the easy. Are you, you going to say Eli? No, no. Um, I actually was going to say Chris Snee. I think Chris Snee is the best offensive lineman in franchise history. I, I've actually done some thinking about this, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's somebody in the 50s and 60s that really mauled somebody, but odds are that guy from the 50s and 60s was also 260 pounds. Um, and 260 pounds, you're like a big linebacker in uh, in today's NFL, right? So I think Chris Snee is the best offensive lineman in franchise history, and getting a guard in here, an all-pro guard, I think would be – the bit would make the biggest difference in on this year's team a hall of fame pass rusher makes this defense possibly the number one defense in the entire nfl well uh, you're chris you're knee also doesn't make right his offense that much better i think you're also very right about that i saw that you had stray hand written in your notes and i wanted to go different um yeah that's true i had to write all my notes on the computer today which may i hated that crap um could have said eli how about that no i don't want to diss my my guy daniel jones like that yeah that's true it. I don't want to do it. Um, Strahan just makes it like, could you, and and I, I actually, you know what? Ask the next question. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. Danny B at Bozzy 18. If you could pick one player from any other NFC East team to join the Giants this upcoming season, who would it be and why? I mean, is it, is it bad? Would it be bad to say Chase Young? I think it might be Chase. So here's a, th- no, no, there's no Eagles players because if there was an Eagles player, it'd be on the D line. Um, you know, Fletcher whether Cox. like, you know, Fletcher Cox, we got Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Brandon Dar- Graham, Darius Slay, I would no rather game. have, have, uh, Chase Young, Darius Slade, you know, we're good at outside corner. Um, boss, I would take Boston Scott. So he doesn't play us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, that would, that would actually, that would add us wins. So we, without Boston Scott, we might have three more wins in the last two years for the running backs. Don't matter crowd. Um, so there's three players, either Amari Cooper or Terry McLaurin, which I think that's a, like a real conversation. Those two receivers, um, McLaurin's, um, you know, he's pretty, he's going moving upwards in his career where Amari is just kind of is who he is. I probably would give the edge to Amari right now. I give the edge to Terry. Okay, cool. So would you rather, and as far as pass rushers, I would rather take Chase Young than Tank Lawrence at this point. Yes. Like, Tank Lawrence hasn't been great. The last couple of years, he's been all right. Nothing, but has been great. Chase Young, you know, his rookie year was overrated by people, but it was still good, and we still think he's going to be a great passer. So would it would it be Chase Young? Well, definitely over Lawrence. I mean, the Cowboys have always also run this like four three, and last year they like went away from it with Nolan, and they may go back to it a little bit this year. But also, they have seventy thousand linebackers. I really wish we were on talking football so we can like talk about the Cowboys defense. Like, what are they going to do? Um, but it it has to be Chase Young. And, well, maybe even you know, you could but even make one an of those receivers for, could be a good one. A, you could also good. make an argument for Montez Sweat. You really can. No, I'd rather have Chase Young. I've watched uh, – Montez Sweat isn't as – he's good, but he's not, like, disruptive. They're a good pair. I was listening to a podcast recently. I'm not going to name the podcast because I actually kind of like it. Um, but I was listening to a podcast recently that, that was, like, trying to discredit Washington's pass rush by saying, you know what, should, should we just skip to the last question because I want because I kind of want to go to it. Um the Washington edge rushers outside of Montez Sweat and Chase Young since they lost Kerrigan, they're not that good. So if one of them goes down, that group could take a big hit back. I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah, you're – What are we doing? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that – yeah, that, that doesn't make – but so you wouldn't be tempted to take one of those wide receivers, pair them with Kenny Galladay? Bobby. Bobby, Montez Sweat has had 27 pressures on and 31 pressures his first two years when he's played 65% of the snaps. That's in, Marcus Golden did that. We were Google Gaga in order for Marcus Golden. He got like 80% of the snaps. That's insane. We weren't, we weren't going to pick Marcus Golden from any other team. No, but, no, but I'm just, I'm just saying, like comparing it to somebody who we were really impressed with his play. Like, yeah, I'm in, I'm not discredited. I'm not like saying I'm not impressed with Montez Sweat, but comparative to Chase Young, I think Chase Young is way more disruptive than Montez Sweat is. That's fair. And especially like he's hitting year two. And, you know, we, we talked about it last week when we were talking about Aziz Ojolari, where it's like, hey, rookie pass rushers don't always, they don't come in and dominate right away. No, no, they do not. And so, you know, Chase Young, he's only going up. I, I really think it would be Chase Young. 
which is really going to get the whole Giants Washington 2019 Week 16 emotions back up in a lot. You can't, you can't, you know, the Daniel Jones to Caden Smith clip is a great clip. They're just for, you know, it's a five touchdown game, game winning drive over Landon Collins after he, you know, ripped Caden Smith down after a play early. I like guess a perfect clip, but anytime you share that, it's like, oh, Chase Long and Ducky. And it's just, you can't talk about it. So. That's the game that I like to now recognize that that is the game that ensured that Nate Solder would not be our left tackle for the 2020 Cam season. Cam Fleming tournament. wouldn't be our starting left tackle. Cam <laughs> Fleming would have been our starting left tackle, and Matt Parrott would have been our starting right tackle. Yikes. Um, all right, can, can uh, I go that, to the I – I have, like, nightmares because of that, just saying that. Can I go to the Washington football question, and then we'll, like, go back to our regular order? Sure. We're already on it. So, Jack at Jack Romano, too. I simply don't understand where all this Washington football team hype came from. Can one of you please explain to me why people are ignoring the fact that we own them? If they're such a great team, why did we sweep them the last two seasons? So, all right, so here's what I have to say about it. Now, I don't know how they started. They probably didn't start off hot. Nobody started hot in the NFC East. Like, even the Cowboys with Dak Prescott won, like, one game before – or two games because they beat the Giants. Two games before Dak went down, and that defense was just dreadful. So, the Giants won one game – in the first what nine games of the season, Bobby last year with Daniel with with yeah. their quarterback, um, Washington probably also did something close to that. But still, Washington put up a pretty darn good season with Dwayne Haskins as their quarterback, who is awful. Um, Kyle Allen, great guy though. Do, yeah, do, uh, stop. Uh, no, we're not. We're not at the he's great guy. This, but he's a good dude. Right, we're, go we're not. A, we're not at the great guy point yet. We have to save the great guy comment for the third guy. Kyle Allen, who is not much better. I'm sorry. You know, go put on the Carolina tape. He was their best QB. Kyle Allen. Well, Kyle Allen ain't. ain't I, I would say Alex Smith is a little bit better than Kyle Allen. Alex Smith was bad. He was not. The, not if you got Kansas City first year Washington Alex Smith, but he was bad. Like, I honestly was, think we're. If you argue who was the like who was the best Washington football team quarterback last year, you're arguing which pig looks the best with lipstick on because. Tyler because though well yeah and then Heineke and so this is why you kind of have to give Washington credit and this is yeah where they upgraded also, at QB Fitzpatrick well, is an upgrade yes but um you know the overall point I'm um, building up thank you for interrupting me and thank you for spoiling the point is that they they did all of they played well they played teams well they played good sound football last year without any kind of answer at quarterback one when, when their quarterbacks were getting rid of the ball in two and a quarter seconds which is absurd. Like it's, it's absurd to me how you can have an offense that operates and just get the ball, hold it for one, two balls out of your hands. I mean, that's Ben McAdoo. That's Ben McAdoo 20, 2016. Like how does an offense operate when you're doing that? So they have some sort of answer at QB. Their offensive line was better than expected last year. Like I think there they were did people get weaker though. They, they yeah. got, a, they got a little bit weaker in the offensive line, but still they're, they upgraded their skill positions. And they have an answer at like, you know, running back Antonio Gibson's like their guy. So, the hype, you know, maybe some people are overhyping Washington, but I definitely think it should be there. And there's a reason why I'm most excited to play Washington. Now, me hyping up Washington doesn't downgrade the Giants, doesn't downplay the Giants, but still the Giants had their quarterback healthy for 12 games last year, and they did not win the division. Whereas Washington had like four or five different quarterbacks and they found a way to win the division. And they also played Tampa Bay very well in the playoffs, but the Giants also played Tampa Bay very well too. Yeah, well, and and the reason there's hype is all those reasons, but the reason it's overhyped is that while Ryan Fitzpatrick is an upgrade, he's not good. You know, where we expect Daniel Jones to take a, a leap forward, Ryan Fitzpatrick is who he is. Like, he's not a good quarterback. He's an average QB who's streaky, he'll have good games, and he'll have really bad games. Like, he'll win you some, some games, you know, where none of the QBs on, on their roster last year was going to win some games. But, you know, he, he'll lose them some games where – you know, Dwayne Haskins, even like as bad as he was, like he became like a very careful QB. So where he wasn't even really losing them games, he just wasn't putting up any points, which I guess you could say is losing their games, but yeah. not because of turnovers where Fitzpatrick will do that. So they did upgrade, um, but Fitzpatrick still isn't a good quarterback, you know, like he's not good. He's funny, the you know, the beard, like ha ha ha, all that good stuff. But uh, like if, if, if someone says they're picking Washington over the Giants, like I have no issue with that. No. I but think they be, do deserve the edge. I think they do. Um, you know, cause on from the outside in, a lot of people probably like they just don't like DJ. You know, like so I, that's where it is from the outside in. But like me, like I expected, like 
my expectation is for the Giants to go in the division this year. You put together yeah. the talent. You got the Q, like the, the QB. You made you said Jason Garrett just need, you need a second year in the system. Daniel Jones, you draft him six. It's year three, so it's time to go. And if yep. it doesn't happen, you know whether that's because of Jason Garrett, because of Daniel Jones, or whatever, heads will roll. Heads will roll at some if if. If we're not in the playoffs, we Absolutely. could not win the division and be really good to make the playoffs. But if we're not in the playoffs, there's going to be someone who has to lose their job. Yeah. And it's not going to be BJ Hill. It's going to be the QB, the OC, the GM. Like it's going to be somebody serious. And speaking of Daniel Jones, uh, Chris Wilson at Chris W1 Lily, I believe. What do you think about Daniel Jones's ability to call a run game? It seems like we ran the ball better with Eli and Colt McCoy as our QBs. Is this a coincidence or Danny not making the best audibles at the line, Bobby Skinner? Well, I'll, if, if you're going to say he's not as good as Eli, I would, I would probably agree. You know, Eli played for 18, you know, 18 years. Um, or not 18 years. How many was it? 16 years? Yeah, it's, it's six, about 16. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wouldn't expect him to be there yet. But Colt McCoy didn't run the run game any better. Like versus the Browns, they had 18 carries for 74 yards. Now the Seahawks, they ran the ball well. But remember, what were the big plays? From it was that one. Game? By, by the way, if people think that the Giants ran the ball well that Seahawks game. It was one drive. It was one drive. That was it. Yeah, and <laughs> and they were three tight end sets with the fullback yeah. or with one wide receiver out, and they were line up and run plays. They weren't like audibly. You know, it wasn't like you know they had, you know, they were running. You know digs in a post and uh you know in a slant it was three tight ends a running back let's line up and take advantage of the most undisciplined defense in the nfl and that's what happened so yeah i that's the uh, the idea that colt mccoy ran the run game better is just not true eli i'm sure he he's a lot better at that pre-snap stuff than daniel jones in year two but yeah uh, i mean that was eli's bread and butter i mean especially when uh, i remember you know being a even a, just a young fan and hooting and hollering of why doesn't Eli run more two minute drill, you know, fast paced up tempo offense because him calling plays at the, at the line of scrimmage, it was better than uh, Kevin Gilbride at times, especially early in his career, but Jones at times, Bobby, you know, I, I know this is kind of going away from the whole run game question, but in terms of Jones audibling, some of the big, biggest plays of the 2020 season was when Daniel Jones was audibling at the line of scrimmage. Think to that. Cincinnati game where uh, Evan Ingram catches the ball on the right sideline, like one of the first series of the game. Daniel Jones lets the clock roll down, and he is being a maestro at the line of scrimmage, pointing this, pointing this out, pointing that out. Against Philadelphia, there was like a third down where he motions Deion Lewis out to the left sideline, and he, again, rolls down the clock, and he is a maestro at the line of scrimmage, snaps the ball, throws like a little back shoulder fade to Deion Lewis, and it moves the chains, and it's a big play. So some of our biggest plays, have, you know, last year, and this is, of course, pre-Daniel Jones injury, which pre-Daniel Jones injury was kind of getting some momentum up, uh, momentum going, and it's when he was getting comfortable with the offense. So, yeah, this is part of that whole second-year continuity thing. So um, hope, he, hope he does a little bit more of it and it winds up in some big plays. Next question. F Rona at NY Giants Talk 3. I wonder if he's going to keep that name forever. I want him to. He has he to. He should. Have you seen Kadarius Tony's Instagram lives? Any concerns about that? Also, what number that might become available would be the coolest one for him? I Are you got to do research on the number. Is number four available or I think it might be retired? It's probably retired. Because we've never seen anyone wear number four, so I think it's retired. Um, 17, because that's what he wore his freshman year at uh, – at, at uf people would freak out with the plaque school thing but i also think it would be cool people freak out about every number yeah it's like you know so we can't wear number 70 kevin's like no it's like anyone from like that those super bowl teams in the 80s uh and early 90s it's like you can't can't give anyone their numbers but yeah 17 would be fine um i haven't seen his instagram lives i here think... let's talk about this you posted a Kadarius tony meme yeah and one person was like you know, I, I'm not really a big fan of his music, but rooting for him as a player. And he, re I guess he was responding to comments. I think he, here's something I am worried. Here's where Here, we've, here's moved. something we haven't, we haven't reached at anything on the Kadarius Tony thing yet. He is very clearly bothered about what people say about his music online. And so that means whenever, if he has a bad game, if he has a drop or something, like whatever people say online is clearly going to bother him, which, that is a little worrisome where it's like, dude, like not everyone's going to like your music. Like it's just ignore those people. Like I, 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 I agree. Man. People can be annoying, but uh, like, I, like he's, he's 
he, he, that stuff gets in his head. Now, does that affect him as a player? I don't, I don't know, but that is like a little worrisome, you know? Like I could he, see him hating then two years. If he like, if it doesn't go perfect, he could hate New York, which I probably wouldn't blame him, but still. He, I mean, I, I think that's everywhere though. Um, I, it's funny how we actually just talked with a Steven Toronto of CBS sports shout out to him. And he did an interview with Phil Sims and Phil Sims was like, you know, the, the New York media gets a bad rap, but honestly, you know, there are some places that could be smaller that could be worse. Like I, I, I think it's terrible to play in Boston. People in Boston are brutal. I think people in Philly are brutal. And, you know, people in New York can be brutal too. I think anywhere that you go that has a strong fan base, I think we're now in an age where, yeah, it can get bad because you can have access to thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people with a single click on a phone, with a single post that you make. So it's not the fact, you know, you can't really run from anything. So, you know, I think the whole New York thing is overblown, but yeah. But there's um, there anyway. but, but there's people there is people who like love to hate their own team. Well, right, and that's and that's anywhere and everywhere, and especially that yeah, can be with the Giants. But with with Tony, yeah, he, he has his post notifications on because the second that I posted that, it was a pro Kadarius Tony music meme, and I think he appreciated. It. He reposted it on his story, but then he was going at people in the comments, and at first it was like only one or two, and then I think a day later he like responded to more people in our comments and. Um, it was kind of a, it was kind of bizarre to have that happen in our, in our comments, but, uh, the wide yeah. receivers have been really active with us lately. Alex Bachman, he promoted my basketball team. How about that? Sterling Shepard liked an Instagram post that I made of him earlier in the offseason. season. Shepard, he, he named searches him every once in a while. Cause he'll like a tweet about him. That was like three weeks old. Yeah. Um, I tweeted about Dante Pettis time. was, you know, commenting on my shoes. Darius Slayton, you know, he, he said something about you know me saying he was taking a shot at Leonard. The wide receivers are active. There have been certain things that I have kept certain worries that I have kept private about Kadarius Tony. And, and, you know, we've, you, I'm sure a lot of listeners, if you're keen, if you're a keen listener, and when we talk about, you know, when we did the Kadarius Tony over under 550 total yards, all three of us, Bobby, Danny, Justin, we all said under, it's not, it's not that like, I don't believe in him as a player, but it's like the combo of where does he fit? How does he fit? And also, I hope that he well, just got practices. guys ahead of him year one. Yeah, year one, but if Sterling Shepard was if we trade a Sterling Shepard today, our expectations for Tony would be a lot higher. Just right, because right we would have no other choice. We would have no other choice but to have high expectations. But I think um, he'd do all right, like if he was a starter like if okay, where last year Sterling Shepard went down, definitely would suck if it happened again. But not excited is the wrong word, but you'd a part of you'd be like, okay, let's time to go like you would be excited about watching Kadarius Tony play you know 90 80 to you know 80 percent of the snaps in a game where I was never excited about Austin Mack playing 80 percent of the snaps in a game or CJ board CJ board makes me bored do you know what product doesn't make me Damian bored Ratley. how about that you know what product isn't a rat because they're not a bunch of rats because they're really nice people manscaped never makes me bored um, Bobby Skinner, sports are back. Life is coming back, and it's really, really exciting. It's really, really fun. We talked about the Olympics with DraftKings, the Euros, baseball, major championship, it's concerts. They're all in the summer. You know what isn't? A wild and hairy bush. Tame your pubes with the help from our friends at Manscaped, the leaders and below the waist grooming. Fourth generation performance package includes the brand new Lawnmower 4.0. If an athlete treats their body, body like royalty, why not treat your pubes like Olympic gold? You know, what's what's the saying? Uh uh, you, you look good, you play good. I mean, I think that's the saying with the, that could also apply to your below the waist performance, right? If you look good, you play good. Fellas, do right by your balls. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com with the code GIANTS. The world is starting to open and performance package 4.0 from Manscaped is here to help you get ready. Inside, you will find that lawnmower 4.0, weed whacker, e- weed whacker for the ears and nose hair trimmer, a crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop reviver, toner, plus two free gifts, performance boxer briefs, and the shed travel bag. I have to take a breath after reading all the things you're going to get with the performance package 4.0. The package also comes with weed whacker. Like I said, a chop your worst weeds up top and below the nose here. I have a problem. I have a problem with nose hairs. After and Even after trimming your pubes with the lawnmower 4.0, show them with some sportsmanship with the Manscapes liquid formulations, the crop preserver, ball deodorant, and crop reviver, ball toner. They're the key to feeling victorious this year. Get 20% off and free shipping with 
the code giants at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code giants at manscaped.com. Achieve pubic glory this year with Manscaped. Manscaped.com, promo code giants, 20% off free shipping. Thank you, Manscaped. Next, Next question. question. Next question. Chris. I believe this is Chris Mickle. What is your favorite move of the offseason? Can't wait for the PPPs. Hashtag talking giants versus the world. Less than a week away when you're listening to this. How about that? Bam. Yeah. Um, I mean, starting next week, it's episodes every single weekday for six weeks. Um, Kenny Galladay. I know it's the easy answer, but it's true. Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay. Like, go. You went out and got your guy. Help your young QB. It's the move that helps your young QB, the QB that I love and believe in. More than anything else. So, Kenny Galladay. I'm going to Dory Jackson. Because I've been poo-pooing on this offense. Hope I'm wrong. Really hope I'm wrong. I've been poo-pooing on this offense. I There's not a scenario in my brain where I can see this offense being really above average. Like, really, like top 10, right? But there is a scenario where I can see this Giants defense being one of the top, if not the top in the league. And a Dory Jackson and James Bradbury would be the guys on the outside that would take care of any wide receiver. And that is the move that gets me most excited about the trajectory of this team. Bam. Bam. Next question. Jesse Samino, if Talking Giants was on the planning committee for the Giants you fan the fest. question, by the way. No, I did not. I did. Oh, no, you didn't. I missed. Never mind. I'm... Never mind. No, I didn't. Never mind. You didn't. I'm wrong. My bad. Wow. First time you and I make been... mistakes sometimes. No, no, this is the first time you ever made a mistake in your life. Jesse Semino, if Talking Giants was on the planning committee for the Giants Fan Fest, what would the event be like? I tried thinking of something. I don't know much what if I would change. Like, what could we do instead? Unless there's, and like, unless like without with actually being serious, besides being like fireworks all over, the, the giving kids fireworks. Like, there's really nothing else I could do. Here's what I would do. I would say. Let's let's you know what? Look at this. Look at how many people want to come to this. Let's open up training camp and not be assholes. That's what I would do. No, really. Um, I would keep Fan Fest the way I love the idea of fireworks. They are apparently bringing in alumni, right? The event of it being at MetLife Stadium, I think, is really really cool. Except, guess what? I would do that more except you don't need to bring in the alumni you don't need to do the fireworks and if anything what are they allow are they allowing fifty thousand or twenty thousand i think they're maybe they're allowing 50 so guess what instead of allowing fifty thousand for other training camp dates allow ten thousand allow twenty thousand and you don't need to you know have metlife all the way open and sure that does that have a lot of staffing you know i don't really know i don't really care i'm not i would let us call the game Get out of here, Bob, Papa Carl Banks. I don't want to call the game. Oh, I wait. Actually, no. I've called games. I've called high school games before. We should get some high. Someone should let us call a game for something. And we'll behave. Who would would you be the play by play guy, or would I be the play by play guy? You could it, be play by play. I'll be it, color. It's an art. It really is an art to be play by play. Yeah, I couldn't do play by play. No, I, I don't know if I could do it because I, I was the color when I did the high school games last year, which was a ton of fun, by the way. Yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of was. I think it was kind of good. Um, you could it, do play. You could do play by play. Well, no, it's an art. I don't know if I could do. It. I, I was doing color for the high school games, but really. So the question to Jess, uh, answer to Jesse's question is, Fan Fest the way that it is is kind of cool, kind of perfect, kind of how it's designed, but then more practices available cut down the capacity and have it at metlife stadium so you don't have to worry about the stupid uh setup at quest diagnostics and the only thing you probably would need is more security but again jesse sumino didn't ask me to set up the logistics of it that's my proposal bam next question west lock at wessie westicles which will always make me giggle every time i read the handle if the giants finish 10 and 7 and make the playoffs as a wild card which would be more disappointing? A, Giants offense ranked 20th, or B, Giants defense ranked 20th? Um, it, for me, it would be Giants defense ranked 20th. Yeah, because the offense would be up 11 at 20, you know, ranking, you know, spots. So the defense would down be would be down 11, you know. So I could see as the, if the off defense was good enough and the offense was ranked 20th and it was ranked 20th for – I don't know, but yeah, it just, the defense would be uh, an 11 spot downgrade. The offense would be an 11 spot upgrade, you know? So I'd rather have an upgrade than a downgrade. I mean, and, and again, like this, so this is no, it's no a good offense. question. No offense to West though. Like what is, so uh, this is why 
I get mad at like analysts and Wes is not an analyst, but this is why I get mad at analysts that say, Oh, the giants offense is 10th or, you know, the giants defense is the 10th rank. What does that mean? Are you talking about yards? Are you talking about allowing points? What are you, points. what are you referring to? The rank so, ninth points. Points. Well, I think Wes is inferring yards here. Well, yards, they were like 13th, 14th. Right. So, uh, I mean, so, so again, like, what are we, what are we talking about? Points. He's talking points. Points. So that's what I, that's the only thing I, I never reference yards. I always reference points. Yeah. Yards don't matter. Well, yeah, the they, Giants, they do, but the at the end of the defense. day, the, the, the name of the game is scoring points and stopping the other team from scoring points. So there's no scenario in my brain that the Giants are below average in points allowed this year. There's no, that's not a reality. That's a, right, so your answer is the defense being ranked 20th. Yes. Fine. I, I would, I would agree. Eli Wortman, would you eat a fish heart for the Giants to win a Super Bowl? We Some people are saying that. that's fake. No, because there wasn't blood squirting all over the place. There's blood. There's blood on the boat. Yeah, but like, didn't it, it didn't like you bite into heart. People were expecting blood to squirt out of it. Well, let's do it. Let's get you here for training camp. Let's go fishing on a boat and let's take out the heart of a tuna. Let's I'm not. You. I would. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't ingest blood. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not. I wouldn't. We wouldn't eat it, but then we would squeeze it a little bit. We're not psychos. Danny Behan had people mad at him. For the PETA people. Oh, the, the PETA? Now, it's weird because I embedded okay. his video and then my then that tweet kind of got around. But of course, it was of course it was Danny Behan that got the PETA people. Yeah, the, the PETA people were really mad. At, at, one guy said, I'm a Giants fan and I'm hoping Leonard Williams has a torn ACL after wow. watching this video. You know what? How about we harass that guy? Let me pull up his Twitter. And we will... That's I, a really screwed up thing to say. It's Twitter. I don't really. People say screwed up stuff. No, but I mean, even I mean, okay. So unless you're like a vegan person, or that's what he is. But um, but unless you're a vegan person who just hates like killing anything, it's like okay, fine. You hate killing anything that's not that's that's breathing has a pulse, fine. But if you're just like a normal dude who maybe like do people eat tuna, I'm sure people eat the hearts. Leonard Williams eats the hearts of every NFC's quarterback and Russell Wilson. So, someone said the guy said POS psychopath, and then he left no comment. As a Giants fan, I'll be rooting for him to get clocked or tear a ACL. His at is at vegan four the number four. M. There you go. So there tweet go. at him, harass him. There you go. Here, what should I say? What should I tweet at him? What should you tweet at him? You're a wonderful man who has many many issues should i, I say wish we're coming for you i wish we can t- you no, we should just tag leonard williams and be like give this guy your address and let's and you can talk about it all right i tweeted we're coming for you okay there you go that's not a that's is that a threat or is that a promise um and then one guy, I mean, people are so mad about this. He said, cool, a complete disregard of an appropriate mental state. Many police would love to do the same to someone like, like, oh my gosh, like what is wrong with these people? I love it, by the way. I yeah. love it. I love that Leonard Williams, did, not, not to piss people off, but I just love in general that I love Leonard Williams so much and that we think that football players are, you have to be a psychotic person to play the game of football and especially to play it like a bat out of hell. And I love that Leonard Williams took the beating heart out of a tuna's uh, chest and he just took a bite out of it. And if it's fake, why, why would you stage that? Why would you stage that? Cause it's a pretty badass video, but I don't think it's fake anyways. Um, Danny Behan. Would I eat, would I do it for the Super Bowl? Like Eli Warman said, absolutely. In a heartbeat. Oh, I, no, no I pun intended. I no, really didn't mean to intend. intend that was that there. was really good. I, I really not. wasn't. As soon as I said it, I was like, "Oh no, that sounds really corny." I would not. That's really that's that's really nasty. Oh come on, for a Super Bowl, I would not. I've already seen two. You're a scumbag. Uh, maybe I, for the I, business. I, I hope business. you tear an ACL this year. After seeing Leo Williams, Danny Behan at D. I hope you tear an ACL. That's my. Now that you said that, that's what. All Danny right. Behan asks, after seeing Leo Williams rip a heart out of a tuna and ate it, did you guys do anything crazy this offseason to get the juices going? Nothing crazy. Like, do the potato. I do, you know, we had the potato cannon. The billboard was pretty, like, exhilarating. 
no one cared about it. And then, you know, like going car racing, that's fun. But no, nothing crazy. What about you? I drove kind of fast on the New Jersey Turnpike last night. There you so. go. Um, in, in the in the truck lane too. So, Brian right Porras at B Porras one. Do you think the percentage of blitzing plays by opposing defenses will go down over the first two to three games? And you already got the blitz percentages up. I was going to talk about it, but um, so the question is: Do you think the percentage of blitzing plays by opposing defenses will go down over the first two to three games? I would hope so. With the first three games, Denver was 19th in blitzing. Washington was 13th. Atlanta was 12th. Now Atlanta also, has a new DC. Washington, coaches. I think, is going to blitz the piss out of us. Like I don't think there's not. I don't think there's anything that could happen week one that's going to stop Washington from blitzing us. Um, Denver, Denver week. I think Denver week one is going to blitz us. But and... I can see Denver being like we have Vaughn Miller versus Matt Parrott. Like let's let's take our chances with four. But but we're we're also comparing it to. 2020 we're not comparing it to league average like daniel jones was the third most blitz qb in the nfl after josh allen jim and josh allen were like 0.1 percent apart and cam newton was 42 percent blitzed um will garrett will garrett make teams pay because expecting daniel jones to hit 50 percent of uh of deep passes can't be the plan going forward will jason garrett make make them play in his play design by the teams that blitz and i hope yes I hope that that has to, and if anything, that question, that question you just asked, I think is the most important question for this Giants team this year. And it's something that we talked about throughout the 2020 season. It's something we talked about all off season. That's why Kenny Galladay is so important because even if you're not going to design anything kind of special or awesome in terms of deep concepts, if you get Kenny Galladay one-on-one, he's the best contested catch option in the national football league. And that's not even being a Homer biased uh, point of view. He is the best. So so, um, big, big facts. Also Saquon Barkley too. You know, it's it, it, Saquon Barkley having him. Does that impact? If anything, you would think it would impact teams wanting to blitz us more, but that was not the case because even with Saquon Barkley gone, teams were still blitzing us last year because also, Daniel Jones last year just showed that under pressure, he was not the same quarterback as he was in 2019. Now there's an element to nobody's open. So if nobody's open and you don't want to force the ball and you don't want to throw interceptions, then you're just going to take the sack. But also Daniel Jones, after his rookie season, according to next gen, he was like, he was listed as like a top 10 quarterback under pressure in terms of his quarterback rating and the advanced stats. And then last year, his quarterback rating under pressure was not good. So did something happen with Daniel Jones in terms of his ability to throw under pressure? We I know don't the know. Answer to that. You have an answer to that. I said, you. we all know the answer to that. The answer, w- w- what is PS the answer? to JG. There you go. There you go. That's the answer. So you that, th- like you said, that question, will Garrett make teams pay? Biggest question. Ken NYG at life NYG. If Garrett continues to call games conservatively and the Giants are losing games because of it, how long do you think he lasts until he gets the boot? I think he lasts the whole season. The whole season? Yes. That's a take I was not expecting. You think that they're gonna they would fire Jason Garrett midseason? No, it isn't isn't the thing that everybody's been saying and thinking is that Jason Garrett has Just even if they're saying it doesn't mean it's true. Even if they go one and two and the offense looks bad the first three weeks, that Jason Garrett's gonna get the boot and Kitchens is gonna come in. I don't think he's gonna get fired. They didn't even they the plan was never to even fire Col- Colombo. Garrett yeah, is too would- nice to fire him in season. They were just going to do what they did with Freddie Kitchens with Jason Garrett. They were just going to bring in somebody else. But they've already him. done that, you yeah. know? Yeah, what they've already done, yeah. So, I just don't – Jason Garrett, like, if there's one thing you see he's elite at, is it's not getting fired. That's a good drop. It's true. If he was – if he had any other name than J- – if he, like if, – if, if his name was – Bobby Skinner. No, I'm trying to think of like a real person. If it was, who's a QB coach? Who was the QB coach in S- at the Chargers last year that we liked? If his name was Cam Cameron, I'll I'll bring up someone who was fired midseason before and the team that's, won a Super Bowl. It's a good alliteration. If it was, he's a real person. I if, know. If if Cam Cameron's our offensive coordinator, I don't think he's brought back for a second year. 
but it's Jason Garrett, so he is. Tough for Cam Cameron. Okay, last question. Nope, actually, that's not the last question because we already asked the last question earlier, so we're done. You idiot. Me, me idiot. Um, let's let's like talk about what the month of August and the last week of July is going to look like for new listeners, new people that are here that maybe found us on the YouTubes during the season. What are we What are we going to be getting into through you know last week July and the month of August? We'll lay it all out at the start of next show. Oh, but I'll give it a quick is. We'll be having a ton of inter- like basically every beat report we want to get on will be on. Uh, you know, the preseason recap, so the regular two episodes a week. But we'll be having five episodes a week, one every weekday. We'll be uh, called Player Profiles and Projections, PPPs, two players, uh, an episode. Now, if you're on YouTube, they'll be separate. One will come out at 8, one will come out around 11. Um, but if you're if, if you're on the podcast app, they come out at the same time. Like the first one, like Monday next week, we'll have a, a an episode that's between 20 and, and 28 minutes. About Sterling Shepard and Darnay Holmes. And then we'll have our Camp Battles episode on Tuesday. And then Wednesday will be Andrew Thomas and Tay Crowder. And then Thursday will be Devontae Booker and Blake Martinez. And then Friday will be, you know, an an interview with an episode or an episode with an interview. And then so on and so on going forward. And then until until the week, until game week. So my favorite time of the year. My favorite time of the year. I know the draft is your favorite time of the year. This and the PPPs and putting out content for everybody to consume to get ready for the season, like just every single day. And I know a lot of people aren't really, a lot of people aren't even tuned in until the week of the start of the season, but really, and and frankly, in my opinion, if you are a diehard fan of this football team, you are watching every single PPP because this is the place to be. This is the place to be to get ready for this giant season. I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. All right, that's an episode. We'll be back on Friday. I have no clue what we're doing on Friday. I really don't. Um, but this Friday is the last time we have to plan out what we're going to talk about on an episode. How about that? Woo! Until so, like what month? And, until like, you know, possibly even February. March, because we're going to win the Super Bowl. Well, I said February because we win the Super Bowl. March. Well, no, but then we're going to take a couple weeks talking about the Super Bowl. So March. All right. Um, that's an episode. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back on Friday. Until then, let's go Big Blue.